We're on the surface of Mars for another edition of Out of This World. That's where NASA pulled off another first. They made history with the first powered flight on another planet. Ingenuity is the tiny helicopter that tagged along with Perseverance rover. It flew to a height of three meters above the ground, hovered, pivoted towards Perseverance in the process, and gently lowered itself back to the ground. We are joined now by space and science writer Scott Sutherland to talk about this historic event, Ingenuity, capturing the imagination and attention of so many. Scott, so this is a proof of concept, but still really cool. What kind of challenges, I'm sure there are many, that uh, would the engineers have faced with this? Uh, well, the first was to get it to Mars with the Perseverance rover and have it survive to the surface. Uh, and then the next would be to have it all, all on its own survive the Martian night, where it can get as cold as minus 80 to minus 90 degrees Celsius, uh, which it pulled off with flying colors, uh, or the punt. But um, then it was to overcome the actual Martian atmosphere itself, which only has about 1% of the atmosphere of, compared to Earth. Uh, to generate enough uh, lift, enough push from its rotors to actually lift off the ground and fly. And here I have trouble sometimes with my cell phone, Scott. Really, it really is the little helicopter that could. Let's talk about what's happening in our sky during spring because there's some interesting things. We're talking about four supermoons, the second one, April 26th. So when we talk about supermoons, really, what makes these moons so super? Uh, well, um, a supermoon happens when a full moon occurs uh, at a point where the moon is near or at its closest to Earth in its orbit. Uh, it, has a, it has an elliptical orbit rather than a circle, uh, so sometimes it's closer, sometimes it's farther away. Uh, and uh, when it, we do have a supermoon, it, can, it appears uh, slightly larger in our sky because it's a little bit closer, uh, and it can be significantly brighter, up to 30% brighter in our sky too. And so when people hear the words pink moon, mm -hmm. they might get a little excited that they can look up and see a pink moon, but sadly that's not the case. Right, uh, we're gonna have to wait till next month for a pink moon uh, when the, with the lunar eclipse. But for this one, uh, it's a traditional name, uh, I believe set by the, the Farmer's Almanac years ago, uh, where it, it's supposed to commemorate, I believe it's a, a plant called the uh, moss phlox that has pink flowers that blooms in early spring, and so that lends its name to this particular full moon of April. Okay, so let's move now to the meteor showers. People love those too. We've had the Lyrids in April, we get the Ada Aquarids in May, and they have to do with comets that have been around for a very long time. That's right. Um, the, uh, the Lyrids, which just peaked a few days ago, uh, come from a comet called Thatcher, uh, which was first seen in 1861, and it's way out beyond Pluto right now. It'll be back in the, the 2270s at some point uh, there. Uh, and then the Eta Aquarius, which are coming up in early May, the first week of May uh, is when the peak happens. That is uh, comes from Halley's Comet, in fact. It's one of the two meteor showers that come from Halley's Comet. And um, they are tiny little flecks of ice and dust that come off of these comets when they pass through the inner solar system. And then Earth flies through that stream of, of, of debris. And when those debris particles hit our atmosphere, it creates those bright streaks in the sky. Love it. Now, the only thing that we can all wish for, Scott, is that we have the right weather, the clear skies for people to enjoy all of these things happening in our night sky. I always appreciate my conversations with you, Scott Sutherland. And of course, for more of this, go to our website, theweathernetwork.com.